Welcome to Wednesday's edition of Take 5, which is is really just a carryover from Tuesdays. Take 5 is we take five minutes or so. Yesterday was a little longer, I'm afraid, and look at the words of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. And I feel like yesterday, the, the theme Jesus was talking to us about, about anger. And um, I basically just read the passage, went a little long, and I felt like, boy, we left a lot of things hanging. So I thought I'd take Wednesday to sort of summarize a few things in that entire passage. We live in a society that is very, very angry, and maybe you feel it too in all of the stress and pressures of the protocols and the politics of our day. And Jesus' words couldn't be clearer. So I thought I would just summarize a few things from Matthew 5, 21 through 26 about anger and about where we ought to sit in it in these days. The first thing, again, just so you hear it, Jesus says, you've heard it said, don't murder. Whoever murders will be liable for judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable for judgment. Getting to the, the heart of the matter, which is what Jesus is doing in all of this. And so three things I want to just say real quickly from this passage and others regarding anger. First of all, anger's human. So if you went away from yesterday thinking, oh man, I do get angry. I must be such a horrible person. Anger is human. In Ephesians chapter 5, the Apostle Paul would write, be angry, but don't sin. And I think what he's saying is anger is a normal, human, personal emotion. God gets angry. Uh, so be angry. It's okay to express the emotion. But then uh, Paul would say, be angry and do not sin. In other words, don't let your anger go to the places of sin. Um, he'll even say, and don't give the devil a foothold. In other words, don't let the sun go down on your anger is what he says. So there's a time limit on your anger. And then there's a, a bitterness quotient on your anger. If you allow the sun to go down on your anger, if you allow anger to take over your, your words, your personality, that's giving the devil a foothold. That's when anger becomes caustic. So be angry. Anger is human. But don't let the sun go down on your anger. Don't let... Um, the evil of the day take over your anger. Allow it to be as godly as you possibly can. So first thing about anger is human. So let yourself off the hook, but be careful of the bitterness quotient that's there. Secondly, words matter. When, he, when Jesus talks about anger, he says, if you throw insults at others, if you call somebody a fool, then you're really into judgment. Words matter. So in our anger, be careful of your words. What was it President Bush used to say, the first President Bush? A count to 30 before you say anything in your anger. Words matter. If you insult others, if you call others fool, that's what Jesus is talking about here. Um, we live in a day where it's so easy to label people in angry ways. Don't do it. And the reason words matter is because, in a sense, they reveal our spiritual condition. That's why Jesus says, the person that says, you fool, is liable to hellfire. A person that's constantly living in the, the verbiage of insult and saying nasty things to people and calling names, they're just revealing their spiritual condition. Anger is human. Words matter. And then the third thing reconciliation is Christian. Go back and read the passage we looked at yesterday. He gives two illustrations. Reconciliation is essential for Christians. That's why he says when you go to worship and you have something against somebody, before you go in and enjoy the worship service, you need to reconcile. Reconcile is Christian. And then he gives the other illustration about going to court. If you have a dispute with another believer, don't go to court. It's okay to go to court. Uh, courts are, are given to us for peace indeed. But in the illustration here, he's saying it's better to reconcile. So if you can reconcile with that person before getting the lawyers and the judge and the jury and everybody else involved, see if you can reconcile. Because reconciliation is Christian. So sum it up. Anger's human. Words matter. Reconciliation is Christian. Got it? Take five. I'll see you.